happy holidays, happy Kwanzaa, happy Hanukkah, happy Tuesday. I am Dr. James Smith Jr. and welcome to the Dr. James Show. For those of you who give gifts, the best part about it is, is knowing that you are giving the gift and anticipating the person's reception. And today I have one big gift for you because we have myriad all-stars. Folks who have been on the Dr. Show, Dr. James Show this year and have made time to come back one more time to share their thoughts, their highlights, lessons learned with the Dr. James audience. So buckle up, get ready for 90 minutes of some pearls, wisdom, fun, music. Yes, we got some music for you. And I'm gonna bring the first group out uh, momentarily. And every 15 minutes or so, more of the all-stars will come on and we're gonna have one big discussion, conversation. So first we have Oscar Pierre Castro, former Inroads employee and director of HR and inclusion at Philadelphia Yearly Meeting. We have Norman Wood, trainer, author, and CEO of the Norm Wood Company. We have Howard Prager, author, speaker, executive coach, and leadership consultant. We have the Emily Sizek, CEO and co-founder at The Post is Inc. We have all the way from the Netherlands, Raymond Honig, COO at the Masters Group, BV. We have Michael Robinson, keynote speaker, podcast host and director at Temple University. Welcome, welcome, happy Tuesday and happy everything else. How's everybody doing? And I know you're gonna hesitate who goes first. So Emily, what's going on in your life? Oh, I mean, gosh, what isn't going on? We've had a crazy uh, six months, if you will, and have really gone national with our product. Our Will um, Builder is now in uh, 14 markets in the last few months and really seeing a lot of growth and so that I'm really excited about it. So, yeah. Beautiful. Any highlights for you for the year? Lessons learned? Things I you, think, something you would do over or not do at all? Um, I think highlights, we really have pulled together as a team, built a really strong product and started changing people's lives. So that's really exciting. I think lessons learned as a um, first time female founder, you're always um, thinking to yourself, oh, what does this investor wanna hear? Oh, what does this person, how can I be the mold for that person? And so sure. what I've really found is being true and authentic to myself and being very transparent has really been um, the best way to go and really learning in to tuning into that inner gut when I have a feeling about something and then following those instincts because um, while sometimes we can question those things, they're typically right. And so, yeah. <laughs> we talk about that inner gut. We have the king of the inner gut, Michael Robinson. What's happening, my man? What's happening, Doc? How are you, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Talk to us. Lessons learned. Highlights. What's happening with Mr. Robinson? I, I've learned this year you got to detox from negative people, places, and things. That's mm -hmm. my lesson learned for uh, 2021 going into 2022. Like, um, what, what, what contributed to that? What happened that made you say, all right, time to detox? Yeah, I, I think what we've seen since the pandemic is amplification of who people really are. Um, I think it's modified and revealed uh, the inner workings of who people are at the core. And, you know, I, I often wondered when I was a younger man, <laughs> why do older people speak their minds so candidly? Yes. Because they don't, they don't yes. have time to waste. Yes. And, and now that I'm in my twilight years, I'm 60, um, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the fact that I, I don't have time to waste. I, I don't want to be around time wasters. And so my role is, is a lot of an advisory role to corporate leaders, to job seekers. Um, and oftentimes, you know, I'm, I guess, spoiled by my corporate crowd. But oftentimes <laughs> when I'm dealing with the unemployment crowd, um, it's difficult. And that's from 
C-suite level on down. Um, people can be unrealistic with their goals. And when they come to you for advice and you're giving them the advice and then they don't take it and then they come back and say, well, that didn't work. And I said, I told you it wouldn't work. <laughs> you know, don't waste my time. Don't waste you know, our time together. So, I, 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 you know, toxicity is, you know, I'm not, I'm not dealing with it, you know, going forward. I, I just got to move forward mm. with a positive attitude and surround myself with more positivity. Michael, you mentioned that when we're older, we tend to speak our truth. When we're younger, we speak our truth. There's sometimes that place in the middle where we begin to camouflage, we begin to collude, not share our truth, go along and get along. So it sounds like you are on a mission to cleanse yourself of all that toxicity in the future. I, I think we are very um, tempered and that's, and that's required. You know, when we're younger, we're a little tempered, especially when we're around people that we esteem very highly. I'm around a lot of C-suite people on a, on a weekly, monthly basis. And so sometimes, you know, you can be in awe of that. And so when you're a younger person, sometimes that can overwhelm you. And then when you're around people who are peers and they're doing great things, sometimes that can overwhelm you and intimidate you. But as you get older and you accumulate your own successes, um, sometimes you're a little bit more forward and getting to the point. Not that you're abrasive, not that you're disrespectful, but you're a little bit more candid yeah. about, you know, your thoughts because you want to get to the point and you just want to get business done. <laughs> <laughs> Norm, Norm, how candid are you, Norm? How candid are you? And any lessons learned this year? Oh, for, for, let, let, me, let me key in on what you guys have been talking about. Please, My mom please. had us. <laughs> My mom had a favorite saying. She was uh, in her 90s when she uh, passed away. But for many, many years, she says aging is a matter of the mind. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Uh, and, and I've my current uh, mantra is uh, basically specifically about inclusion and more than anything about including the older workers. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a subject matter expert on getting older. And so uh, I enjoyed hearing y'all talk about that. I think my big takeaway from this past, uh, well, actually more than a year, but has been learning to really stay in the moment and appreciate the moment for what it has, what God has blessed it with. Uh, uh, you look back the way it used to be, the things you miss about that. And that's, that's, I'm not saying that's negative thinking. I'm just saying, I think I've learned to stay in the moment and appreciate the people I'm with. Uh, love the people I'm with for who they are and what they are and enjoy where I am because uh, it's going to change. I love it. I love it. Norm, I'm going to put you in contact with my good friend, Mark Middleton. He has, mm -hmm. He's the CEO and founder of Growing Boulder. He's right. helping to redefine how people age. He said, we're not growing older, we're growing bolder. He's out of yes. Orlando, Florida. He's doing a phenomenal job. Phenomenal Wonderful. job. I'll okay. definitely do that. I mentioned to the people who are watching that we're going to have some music today. And my friend Howard Prager, Howard, what's happening in your neck of the woods? Well, I don't know. If Sir Michael, and I think, Michael, I think I'm going to name you Sir Michael because I love your attitude. So you are now Sir Michael as of today. <laughs> oh, hey, it comes to you, brother. It comes from you, to you and from you. So so uh, I've, I've got some, some music to share. Um, it's just starting to snow outside here in Chicago. So that's going to reflect what tune I'm going to play. But I have to tell you, um, it's follow your dreams. Mm. Don't give up. Because mm. this year, it took me five years to get here. But I published my book this year, Make Someone Stay. And that has been, thank you, thank you. Beautiful. That has been, to me, the most remarkable accomplishment I've been able to. I love it. Entrepreneur, hold the book up, hold it up. Yeah. Hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> if you call before midnight tonight, you'll get two copies from Bryce. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. But, but, but seriously, it has, um, I, I never knew how writing a book could change your life. Mm. And, and, and the whole book part, reason I wrote the book is not to change my life, but to change others, to get others to think about others first. It seems to me, it's kind of what we've all been talking about um, from, from Emily and talking about how she's got a product that's going to change, help change you. Um, 
Michael talking about getting older and better and speaking your mind and being free to do that because we feel like we're chained, right? That we can't speak our mind. And Michael throws those chains off. And then Norman <laughs> talks about being bolder. It is all about all of this. It's about really being able to step out with who you are mm. most sincerely. And we all need that lift up. So I will play, play a little bit of music, but I'd like everyone to think about your New Year's resolution. You know, we all make these resolutions. We're going to lose that extra pound or two. <laughs> We're going to work out more. Lose We're this extra chin. <laughs> I know, I know. And then get the Botox or whatever, look, look better. And it's like, man, you all look good. All of you look good. So here's the New Year's resolution I'd like you to make. What's something you can do to make someone's day better? Oh. It's something oh. that not only doesn't cost you anything, it gives back to others. Nice. So what can you do as your New Year's resolution? And think about this every day. What can you do for someone else? You know, Jesse White is our Illinois Secretary of State. And long ago, he said, I've got to help these kids in the south and west side of Chicago, the troubled ones, the ones that don't have a place to go. And he created the Jesse White Tumblr 60 years ago. He's taken these kids, he's kept them in school, he's had them get their grades done, and then they go out tumbling. And they don't just tumble in the hood, they tumble around the world. He's taken them everywhere, and he's had over 10,000 kids he has put through this program. It is amazing. Wow. Wow. Talk about make someone stay and live and try to do something for someone every day. He continues to do that, and he's in his 80s. To help us heal the world, Howard. Yes. Definitely. Yes. So you got some music for us? I'm excited. I do. So again, with that snow out there, this is what it's got to be. And notice, everyone, you're safe. My tube has got a mask on it, so no worries, anybody. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Howard Prager. <laughs> friend thank you Ray, raymond all the way from the netherlands you're up you got your trombone with you you have your saxophone you have some drums instruments <laughs> well uh, I, I i know it, it starts snowing in the netherlands today but uh, uh to be honest i'm in spain at this time so uh it's spain life's it's hard. spain life's and, hard isn't it life spain yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's very it's very it's very hard it's very hard well, give you uh, my thoughts of uh, uh, lessons learned. Well, one of the things I've learned is that uh, uh, a, a lot of people, may, maybe it's only in the Netherlands, but a lot of people are negative. And you see that they're, they're, when there's a pandemic, uh, uh, they all start complaining about stuff. And I think, well, look what's more than just where you're all complaining about. So if I'm looking back at the last two years, I really enjoyed spending more time at home. Uh, spending more time with my mom, who's uh, luckily still alive. Spending more time with my wife, because normally I'm I'm traveling a lot. I'm I'm out spending more time with my kids and my friends. Uh, uh, so I think you you get some time to enjoy the most important things. That's one of that's one of the things, and that's and I, I really enjoyed it. So even when everything is going open again, I I definitely gonna make some more time uh, because. Uh, we're getting old soon. <laughs> no, you're getting fast. old. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm growing older. Well, well, well. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to have so, you. Uh, Good to have you. Thank you for making the time. All in. What's the time difference? Are you seven hours, eight hours? 
Yeah, no, it's here. It's uh, six fifteen almost. Yeah, I think it's a six hour difference. It's twelve twelve fifteen around somewhere at your yes. place, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It so it's is. almost dinner dinner time. It's always that's always nice. Well, in Spain we 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 have a little bit later dinner, but uh, it's almost dinner time. Yeah. Ray and I met at a conference in 01. The conference yes. was in the States. I believe it was in Atlanta, Georgia. And we have Correct. maintained a phenomenal relationship ever since. So thank you for, for, for joining us. Oscar, Mr. Castro, I'm knocking on your door, man. What's going on? Life is good. Uh, it's good to be here, uh, Dr. James. It's, uh, it's good to see everybody here, meet new faces. Um, yeah, I think... Um, that's one of the things, one of my takeaways for this year is, uh, is, is this whole ability of the, of the network that I belong to and, and what that means. Um, and um, similarly to Raymond, you know, like looking at the last two years and thinking about connections that have gotten broken because of the virus and, and um, you know, being stuck in the house or whatever, uh, all of those things and also the opportunities for renewed connections, um, and so I think uh, what yeah one of my big takeaways is the renewing of connections, particularly some ones that happened very recently that are uh, similar to the, the the thoughts that Howard and Michael and others have shared. Like keep doing the thing. Um, so like being able to reconnect with folks from from my past who I had done some work with creative stuff um, that some of it went. Um, to places we never thought it would go and other things just right. never happened and fizzled. And now we're back at it again, you know, 20 years later, like, hey, we have an idea. Let's let's do the thing that we we know what to do. And and since we know each other, we know how to do it. Uh, and we're older now. So talking about, you know, working with wisdom and not working with just like youthful energy that is, um, you know, not necessarily always as directed as it could be or should be. And um, so having good mentors, like being able to lean on people and say, you know, you're part of my network. Um, can I ask you a question? You, you, you probably know these things better than I do. Can I, can I, can I humble myself um, and 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 be respectful and ask you of your time? So, like learning how to how to do things um, that I wish I think maybe 30 years ago I had known how to do then, um, but never giving up because life is like this. I'm a lifelong learner and. I think even some of the things that I wish I knew and I'm trying to impart on my children now at their young age um, that I, I wish I knew then, I know now. I, I also know that when I'm 80, I'm going to have revelations that I will wish I had at 30, you know, or 40 or 50. But I'm having them when I have them because that's when I'm having them. And what am I going to do with those revelations? And when, um, and when so. you turn 80, you're going to be the coolest 80-year-old out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm planning to be there. Yep. <laughs> you are cooler than the other side of the pillow, my brother. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Someone else who was super cool, President and CEO of EDA Contractors, Mr. Ed DeAngelis. What's going on, Ed? Happy New Hello, Year. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Dr. James. I appreciate it. I love listening to some of the uh, thoughts of some of the other people on this Zoom call. It's, it's, it's great to hear people ideas of the world and what they think and how things have been going for them and how things are going to go in the future. So it's always, it's always great. It's one of the benefits to this new technology to be able to have time to be able to listen to other people and be able to get together without having to spend a lot of time getting in a car to travel and park and find ways. So, and I think that's part of what reflection for me yeah. is, is this year is trying to figure out the world we're in right now and understanding how to move forward from a personal and a business standpoint in this COVID pandemic world that just doesn't seem to end. It's gonna continue on and, and how do we adapt to it? But at the same time, recognizing that there's a whole disadvantaged community that is suffering way greater because of this, whether it's economics, health, the things that are really impacting um, our communities that are not really spoken about, you know, there's deaths obviously, but there's just a lot of uh, pain out there. You know, you have inflation going on, which is really creating a lot of pain for a lot of individuals. And, and we really haven't gotten to a point where we can kind of move forward. I think just like uh, Raymond was saying, you know, we're spending a lot of time with our families and things of that sort, but there's a lot of people out there right now who don't even have that, you know, and there's people who are suffering addiction and things like that, where they, they're not able to be in a community 
And I think it's something that as leaders, we have to continue to evolve. And I think for next year, it's just evolving who we are and how do we connect as people, both from a business standpoint and from a human being to human being standpoint. So, so we have some challenges, but you know, there's, again, there's pluses and minuses to life. I look at things in a positive light. And I think moving forward, we just have to continue to do that. Just continue to look at it. How do we solve some of the problems and how do we just keep moving forward? So I appreciate the opportunity. Ed, thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you've heard the quote, we don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. Mm -hmm. So how are we seeing things right now? And, and I want you to really pay attention and listen closely because the next person that is going to speak, she's hard to hear sometimes. Her volume is so low. So I'm going to ask Kim to speak up a, a little a little more, the founder of the Redevelopment Group and lecturer at Howard University, Kim Reed. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I, <laughs> I was listening saying, who is he talking about? And I was like, I know he's talking about me. <laughs> Dr. Jim, everyone, hello, 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 hello. Happy holidays. Thank you Happy so much for having me to you. <laughs> what, What's going on, Kimberly? New book Man, out, world I, traveler, what's going on? I am on break. Let me tell you, one of my reflections is to love with purpose my mm. life and not productivity. Mm. And I say that because I work so much, all of us, right? Because like Ed said, we are trying to navigate this remade nation that we're in and working hard to do that, you know, owning a small business, you know, making sure that we're all safe and not in this order, trying to stay healthy, doing my part to stay healthy. Hey, Kim, it, let me interrupt one second. You're talking right now, and Mike Robinson. <laughs> 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 He's bobblehead. He's bobblehead. Well, that's my brother. So I know he was going to say, I knew he would agree with me because we talk about life a lot. And it's very, and, and for me, my biggest reflection, I will tell you what I was just telling you, to love with purpose and, and not productivity. And I will tell you something else that I thought about because I'm on break and I am, I don't feel guilty, not one bit. And I used to feel guilty. And I um, am on break until January 10th and I am going to enjoy it because my goal for 2022, mm -hmm. I don't make New Year's resolutions. But what I do say is what am I going to do better and what did I learn from in 2021? And my goal is to pay a little more attention to life in general. Mm. We get caught up with the news, which is important. I'm not saying that it isn't. But like I also mentioned about loving with purpose and watching my pro productivity and my time and, and, and the people around me, because listen, we're not perfect, right? None of us, but I'm not going to be around people who enhance my dysfunction. I, I can't do that. I can't do that, right? I, I can't, I cannot do that. Okay. So what my, my find my thought around that is to, because we, a lot of times, we are, around, we are around people who amplify our dysfunction, right? And we can't mm. move forward out of our own stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are people around us that remind us of who we are and not, and not who we are becoming. And so my goal is not only to pay more attention to life in general, as I mentioned, because that's so important to me. That's why I said it three times. <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play in the sandbox, no question about it. But I don't have to fill it with toys anymore. Mm. that's been the exciting and realistic part for me in my evolution of 2021 going into Kim 20 Kimberly, what happened this year specifically or a series of what happened to get you to this place? Burnout. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to, I can't be deep. Burnout, right? Because, <laughs> because, you know, I, I work a lot and, you know, and I, and I have a hard time with the art of saying no and which I'm also working on and I am teaching and, you know, as you mentioned, I am teaching in at the Howard School of Business and Executive Education um, as, it, you know, and I'm doing that. I'm running a business. Uh oh and Howard's holding up a shirt. Howard, number one. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. And, you know, I do a lot of, you know, I do a lot of, I do a lot of work. 
right? And outside of my business because of philanthropy, that's very important to me. And, you know, Jim, when uh, Dr. Jim, when I couldn't, when I would miss, and this is, this may be small to others, but it was huge to me because it is my, it centers me. When I miss Bible study on Tuesday nights, mm. when I was too tired to wake up for church on Sunday virtual and we don't mm. have to go anywhere. Mm. When I started feeling my spirit shift and it wasn't productive, it was, I was tired, right? Mm. I, I was, um, you know, I still had joy. I still feel great. This is Kim. You know, I, uh, this is always me. However, my soul was weary. And my soul was weary because I wasn't filling it properly, right? With mm. rest, with, with sometimes the right projects, sometimes the right people, right? So I really had to stop and take a look at what I was doing because I felt tired all the time and I'm not sick. Remember, I had cancer, so I know what tired feels like, mm. right? Going mm. through chemotherapy, mm. right? And, and, and I, I promised God that when he healed me, I wasn't, I was going to do my part to stay healthy. And that's nine years ago. Wow. And I cannot go against, thank you, Norman. I cannot go against, thank you, Howard. Thank you all. I cannot go against what God has done for me. And uh -oh. I said, uh -oh. absolutely not. Uh -oh. so we, we have I, a Zoom selling churches breaking on out. <laughs> get, get my praise on, right? Get my praise on. <laughs> we, we've had... Uh, Tammy Schwartz joined us. Tammy is a professor at your college. We had Councilman Derek Green. I'm seeing all this Inroads alum up in here. Oh, yeah, What's going Inroads. On? Inroads. On? Michael Sherlock, Hi. author, speaker, coach, trainer, has joined us as well. Tammy, I'm going to ask you to go first because you and I are real close. And when I think about going for our, our, our doctorate degrees, you were there for me when I was down. You picked me up. <laughs> when I need to answer, you are right there. Happy holidays and lessons learned or highlights. What's going on? Uh, well, it's good to see you. And I am always delighted to spend time with you, James. You, I, My students loved you, of course, when you came to visit us at, at uh, York College. Um, so when I was on your show back in, I don't know, was it March, I guess? I, I talked about information warfare is what I was talking about. And, mm -hmm. um, and so one of the exciting things that I've had happen is in the last couple of months, I signed a book contract to, um, yes. to write a book about, about yes. information warfare. So I was, yes. I was pretty excited. And, and when uh, I believe it was Howard was holding up the, the book that he just published, I, I, I look forward to a year or two from now being, being right there with you. I'm, I'm so, excited so does about Ed. that. So does Ed. No, 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 no pressure. <laughs> I got Eddie. So, <laughs> so, so I was listening to Kimberly talk about burnout. And one of the things that, um, that I've been reading recently, and I've seen it in my students, I've seen it in my colleagues, I hear it in everyone's voices. Um, the, the pandemic is really a wearing experience. Um, in fact, there was a, a study done by higher ed at the, toward the end of the semester. And they said, normally around the end of the semester, maybe 30% of, of faculty will identify that they're feeling kind of burned out. And this year, that number was over 70%. Ooh. That's pretty significant. That's pretty significant. I saw it in my students. My students started um, around just maybe a week or two before Thanksgiving, sending me emails saying, could I zoom into class instead of coming to class? And I think it's really important, like Kimberly was saying, not only do we have to tune into it ourselves, but we have to tune it into others. And I can't remember who was saying at the beginning, but, you know, make a resolution to see what you can do to make someone else's life better this year. Yes, Howard. That's, yes. I think that, that tuning in to, to the burnout that we're all experiencing simultaneously is really an important part of resilience. Um, and, and then the last thing, um, I, I launched a podcast this summer called Weapons of Mass Disruption. And we talk a lot about this concept of VUCA. Um, VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And, and our world is so VUCA and it's just getting more so. And, and this pandemic is sort of accelerated. But it, I, I love to use this, um, there's a book called Canoeing the Mountains and it's about navigating off the map when you get out into this, this VUCA world. And, and so I like to remind people, you know, when, when you find yourself canoe, 
on the top of, of, of Mount Crumpet, <laughs> right? <laughs> lace up your boots and use your paddle as a walking stick that's kind of that's kind of become my mantra because this concept of creative destruction it's it's spring right the fall is the destruction the spring is the new Mm. and we tend to dwell on the destruction and the loss when creative destruction is taking place and i and i think that how we we frame this world that we're in I mean, so many of you, you folks have talked about the opportunities you've identified in the midst of this absolute chaos and loss of what used to be. Yeah. And I think if, if there's nothing else that I take away from, from listening to all of you and the opportunity to, to network with, with James' incredible network, and, and it's a oh, privilege to be here. This is an amazing group of people. Are you kidding me? Is, is that I, there's such extraordinary resilience in the people that, that are here. And what we can share that, how we can share that with other, that mindset, that's, that's an incredibly important opportunity to, to look at absolute chaos and say, gosh, this is such a terrible problem and everything is so bad, as opposed to, wow, look at this amazing opportunity that's been created and put before me. And so thank you very much for letting me be here. Dr. Tim, you Happy talk New about, Year. You talk about amazing opportunities. It was 2019 National Speakers Association Conference in Denver, Colorado. I'm on the floor getting my groove on at the party, and right next to me is this woman with blue hair. And I'm like, Who are you? Michael Sherlock, where are you from Philly? Why don't I know you? Now I do. <laughs> Michael Sherlock, author, speaker, coach, trainer. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And yes, when you started talking about dancing, I'm like, I totally know where we're going with this one. (laughs) (laughs) Any highlights for you this year? Lessons learned? I mean, you you do so much. You're global. You're speaking, you're writing, you're coaching one-on-one. Any particular takeaway, something that's going to stay with you going forward? Or any, I wish I wouldn't have done that, but this is what I've learned. (laughs) <laughs> and Tammy, I love your the the line about take your canoe paddle and use it as a walking stick because it's so appropriate. I think the biggest thing that I've learned in the last two years, because now we have to say two years since the pandemic is two years ago at this point in time, I was looking at my best ever year ahead of me for speaking all over the globe. I had a full packed calendar. I was getting what I wanted for speaking get fees and all that. Um, I just published my second book and then the floor fell out. But also at this time, two years ago, I knew that I needed to diversify my business. Mm. I knew that. I mean, I had that. It was in the back of my head and I knew that I, that the speaking was great, but what if I wanted to take vacation? Speaking was great. What if I broke my leg? You know, what, all those what ifs and I knew. And so when everything shut down and my calendar emptied out and I had those first moments of panic and I, I know I told Dr. Jim this on, on the podcast is I literally like curled in the fetal position, stuck my thumb in my mouth, crawled into bed and cried, you know, Mm. and said, what happened? And after that, I said, okay, Sherlock, get up. Uh, that's how I talk to myself, Sherlock, get your butt moving. And I reinvented my businesses and I started a second business. Mm. And so last year, you know, in 2020 or this year, I really um, have just figured out what's working and what's not and what feels good to me and what doesn't. And what's interesting is as we go into 2022 and my speaking opportunities are actually growing again, I'm actually saying no to some of them. And I'm saying no, because I'm only taking the things that feel right. And I'm only taking the things that are aligned with where I'm going. And that is we've diversified our services. I offer a lot of different services. I plan to publish three books this year in 2022. Um, one's a novel and two are business books. And right. this is going to be, a, it's, it's really, um, I'm poised for it. But it's the first time probably in a long time where I've said, not, not that I'm not scared to death, let me tell you, like, I don't know how I'm going to get this all done. Um, but what I'm most proud of myself is saying, okay, let's only do the things that are right, that get mm-hmm. you where you want to go. And I want to do more speaking in a different way, which means the next two business books have to come out. The novel is something that I cannot hold back. Um, it is, it is just dying to be released. I think it's going to be really good. I believe it's good. I don't think, I know I've already tested it, um, but it's going to be a big year, but I think going into 2022 for the first time ever, I'm going to say no more than I've ever said. I'm going to say no, I'm going to say no where it needs to be said. 
and I'm not going to be just grateful for when the, when the gigs come along, I'm going to yeah. make the choices that are right. That's right. Michael, I oh. love it. I love it. I love it. And Michael, oh. you, you say no. We have someone on here who says, so what? We have the author, speaker, trainer, coach, Summer Owens from Tennessee in the house, Memphis. Summer O, what's going on? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. It's good. Look, I have to tell you on a personal, I think you were asking like what's important. Um, of course, it's Christmas and I did host my family. We were up in the air about how we would do it and what we would do because my grandmother is 99, will be 100 in March. And, um, and so we did it, but we cut it in about a fourth. <laughs> I'm just, I was brushing in because I just got her out the shower and I have my two grandchildren here too. And I'm like, quiet so it's it's interesting so I'm kind of tired already so like I'm drinking my coffee um, but it's good so what matters though is is family is you know and that's so when COVID hit I was I think Michael said it 2020 was going to be my best year ever <laughs> it was I was so excited about it I had my calendar was full and then I also had my curriculum which you know about uh Dr. James that's in the school system we we're gonna kill it in so many school districts and, um, and it caused me to shift and rethink things too. And so 2020 ended up still being a great year for me, as business goes. Um, and 2021 was even better. Um, so yeah, I, my, my key takeaway, because I, I, I think that was one of the things you asked too, was sure, please. Stop, stop overthinking it. Mm. Every single thing, stop overthinking it. And so one thing that I did um, at the beginning of this year was my So What Success stories where I'm interviewing different people and allowing them to tell their story. So I've been telling my story now for about a decade, but everybody has a story. We know that. Um, and everybody's stories resonate with other people in different ways. It's like, I can tell my story. And I just saw Lenore on here. Hey, Lenore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, it threw me off. So good to see you, Lenore. I wish um, I had that power. <laughs> <laughs> so good but allowing people and it builds my brand too but by interviewing other people and allowing them to share their stories but I had the thought when I was laying in bed one night and I woke up the next morning I was like I wonder who talked to me today mm. shout out to three people um some really significant people in my life um I started I was the president of the National Alumni Association Board of Directors for the University of Memphis at the time I was like I'm gonna hit you of them alone first because of my role and and that's what I did I did three interviews that day I did four more the next day and probably five the next day and I had a bunch in the can and I've been consistent with it every Sunday releasing another so what success story in my YouTube video my YouTube channel has hit monetization and all of that all because I had an idea and I got up and I just went for it and so I've applied that to everything in my business like the books I've been writing the program so the curriculum I have now, it's all on my LMS now. So people sign up. I don't do the training. It's on the LMS. All the for me, it's all on the LMS. All of it because I said, stop overthinking and just get stuff done. And that's what I'm taking into 2022 as well is, yeah, we want to do things well and to think about them. But I think, and I, I don't know, I only know a couple of people on here, but I bet all of us are a little guilty of thinking too long and too hard and not getting stuff done because we're trying to get it perfect. So I see a lot of heads nodding right now. You might not know them well now, but you will. But the biggest nod I'm seeing is from someone who I believe had that somewhat yeah. philosophy when he was a little boy. We have Councilman Derek Green, Philadelphia. Councilman, what are you thinking, hearing all this stuff so far? Uh, Dr. J, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. I will be remiss, and maybe your brother had a little responsibility for this. I see a lot of inroads connections and a lot of Catholic connections too. So I just oh. see a lot of a lot of achievement through um, Brother Robinson, <laughs> Brother Castro. But you know, it's great to be here. And as I think about where we have come through this pandemic, and while a lot of us are using the R word. Now, I'm not talking about Rockham the rapper, but I'm talking the <laughs> R word because we talk about reboot, refresh, reimagine, relaunch. 
All of these are words because we came out of a very challenging time period and we need to not forget about that, but also move forward and think about, you know, COVID was so challenging and we're still getting through this with the Omicron mm. variant. And so many people unfortunately lost their lives, lost jobs, um, lost businesses. But we also have to think of how we came through this. Um, and I, I saw... Um, Prophetess Reed giving us some biblical perspective earlier, um, but we really have to think that we survived this, mm. and what we survived makes us stronger. And we have to think about: imagine if we had this pandemic in 1992. Wow, we'd be on AOL. The wow. world would really be shut down. The, uh, all of us were fortunate enough to even work remotely. We wouldn't have been on Zoom or Skype or WebEx or all these other platforms we had to learn over the past two years. So we really have to think about how fortunate we are that we were able to have all this technology and use it. In some ways, it brought us closer together in a lot of ways. And so for me, I reflect on, you know, during the pandemic, I put together a Zoom with my family on my mother's side, my father's side. We did a Zoom every other week. Every Saturday at 10 a.m. was my dad's side, 11 a.m. was my mother's side because we just wanted to connect. And I think that brought us closer together as a family. As we went to 2021, we now do it once a month. But I just see a, a closer bond and connection because of that. And then one of the things that happened in the end of 2019, one of my line brothers uh, who lived in Johannesburg was diagnosed with cancer. And, you know, as we're going through that process, unfortunately, Steve transitioned in April of 2020. If it had not been for this pandemic and these platforms, we would not have been able to get together as a line to just get on a Zoom um, at, hey, Steve is up right now, he's talking, let's do a Zoom at 1.30. Or, hey, he's feeling better, let's do a Zoom at 3.30. If we had been in our typical situation, I would have been in the council hearing, Hassan would have been over here, Chuck would have been in Ohio, Mike was in still in Johannesburg. We've been busy with meetings and would not have been able to get together and share that experience collectively with him as he transitioned. So as all of the challenging things that we had during the pandemic, I keep trying to look through the positive things that we were able mm. to do that, but for this pandemic, we would not have had that experience and opportunity to share that transition with Steve. And I think so many of us have had the opportunity to get closer with each other, with friends, loved ones. Think of, I know we've had Zoom fatigue, and Zoom burnout and been WebExed and Skyped out. I understand all that. I've been on 30 different platforms. Um, sometimes I, I, I feel I can write a rom-com based on all these platforms <laughs> I've been on. Uh, I re already have, if I decide to leave city council, I already have the, the name of the first one, you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's successful and I'm like Issa Rae and I'm on HBO, I already have the sequel. <laughs> you are still on mute <laughs> but what I'm saying is seriously is that we have been able to come together closer using technology I know technology has been a challenge in a lot of ways but it has been something that we realized and listen to what Michael said about the what if I'm a big proponent and that's one of the things I'm going to double down on in 2022 to not fall for the what if because mm. if you try some new initiative and it works out Okay, you move on with your plan. If you try, it does not work, then that means no. But often that no is a not right now. Not right now. But at least with the yes and the no, you have closure. If you never take the initiative and you always have the what if, a year, five years, 10 years, maybe 30 years from now, you're always going to have that perspective of what if. And so when I talk to high school students, college students, law students, I say, you never want to have that what if, because it, it, it's paralyzing. But if you take that initiative, and I think if we take that initiative going into 2022 and beyond, you'll never have that what if moment, and you'll learn from it, and we can be better people going forward. Councilmember Green, spectacular. And, and what you're saying is really resonating with me because it's a great transition to <laughs> Shalana McFarland. Shalana is the project manager at Can Do. And I'm also, Shalena, could you share your story? I'm not sure if the folks on 
with us right now saw your episode and council member green talked talks about what if and your life has changed so much lately would you mind sharing your story absolutely um first of all let me give you greetings from the from atlanta georgia where it's 77 degrees today <laughs> um not missing the cold weather and the snow at all uh Thank you for having me, Dr. Jim. It's um, been an amazing year. Uh, for those of you that don't know my story, I was an attorney in Atlanta. I went to federal prison in 2005 for mortgage fraud uh, related to my clients. And um, I was sentenced to 30 years. And due to my being asthmatic and having some other health issues, I was released in June of 2020 under the CARES Act which allows those that are medically vulnerable to serve the rest of their sentence on home confinement. And in January of 2021, I received a commutation of my sentence from President Trump on his last day in office. So um, I saw where Ms. Swartz had talked about release, but release really was literally a release for me um, in, in January. And so I have worked diligently since the day I came home, even when I had an ankle monitor on criminal justice reform and advocacy because of what I experienced firsthand. Um, from the trial system to, you know, with me getting a 30 year sentence as a first time nonviolent offender, I never even had a traffic ticket, but because mm. of the way the sentencing guidelines and the prosecutors are allowed to go unfettered with their charging, um, I ended up with what, have, what would effectively have been a, a life sentence. And I left a four-year-old daughter at home. So my daughter, who is a um, soon-to-be graduate of Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University, my alma mater, uh, she will graduate next year and I will be at her first graduation ever. I miss kindergarten, junior high, high school, but college, I will be there and I don't care when they say don't yell, I'm going to yell. <laughs> but <laughs> it has been an amazing year. I've been able to impact so many lives. I've been able, once some of my, the things that I've been a part of, we were able to bring home an elderly man who had six life sentences. He's now with his family. Um, the biggest victory that we just had was the 4,000 people that were placed on home confinement to relieve the prison population. Uh, the Biden administration, unfortunately, was going to allow the BOP to send them back after COVID was, de was determined to be over. So can you imagine coming home, getting a job, getting, you know, rebonded with your family and then being mm. told you have to go back to serve your sentence? It makes no sense. So we worked diligently, a lot of organizations, and together we were able to get a memo from the Justice Department last week that says unless they violate, they do not have to go back. So they'll be able to continue to stay home and raise their children and be a part of their families. And ironically, out of the 4,000 people that were sent home, there had only been 25 violations. So we're talking about people that are ready, they've paid their dues and they're ready to move forward. And so my thoughts for 20, yes, Elena, 2021, 2022, 2021, give us right. highlights just, just where you are. Right. Just that a grateful heart um, leads you to your miracles. Mm. And I think somehow with me having different eyesight because I was away for so long, the things that you all complain about, I'm extremely grateful for. <laughs> and so when you all are being complaining about being, you know, you're stuck in the house and you can't go anywhere after having been stuck in a cell, I am abundantly grateful to just be able to walk in the living room and, and, mm. and snuggle with my mom on the couch or go mm. in the refrigerator and yell about who drank my juice. So um, <laughs> it's, it gives you a different perspective. So what I would encourage you all to do in 2000. 22 is to look for your miracles because they happen every day. If you went somewhere and there were six people there and four of them came down with Omicron and you didn't, hey, that was a miracle. So it happens everywhere and be sh and share your miracles and share your joy because you never know when people will find encouragement through your words. And so I, I am so thankful to um, Dr. James for allowing me to have a chance to share my words and mm. I'm available if anybody wants me to talk um it's you know I'm, I'm more than willing to share my story 
And we're gonna, we're gonna get going Selena on? on that speaking circuit, National Speakers <laughs> Association. We working on you. We working. Shalana, you said find your miracle. 20 years ago, when I joined the National Speakers Association, I met Lenore Billings Harris, and she's been a miracle in my speaking career. She's an author, diversity inclusion, diversity, equity, and inclusion expert. She's a speaker, a Hall of Fame speaker. She's a miracle, and she's here to join us. Lenore, what's happening? Oh, thank you so much, Dr. James. I'm so sorry I couldn't have been on much earlier. I'm just uh, relishing in all of the wisdom that I've been hearing uh, to to this point. So uh, thank you so much for doing this. Absolutely. So, Highlights for the year, lessons learned, admonition for us yeah. going forward. Wow. Highlights for the year. <clears throat> so as since you all have just heard that my area of focus is diversity, equity, and inclusion. After the murder of George Floyd, um, when I thought I was going to be slowing down um, in 2020, that, that was the plan, uh, then life totally changed. And um, I, my, I've been more busy than I possibly ever, uh, than, than I ever have Ooh. been in, in my 30 plus years in the business. But I felt like I could not say no because clients that were coming to me were clients from long ago, many of them. And I knew they were coming to me because they trusted me during this really difficult time. And I thought, you know, this, this, this is the time uh, if they're going to make a shift. And as a result of all of that work, what I realized for this year was <clears throat> in order for me to be able to serve my clients, I needed to be healthy. Now, thank goodness, thank mm. God, I've, I'm mm. very healthy. I'm all vaccined up and all that kind of stuff. Haven't gotten sick, but I knew that I needed to take a mental rest because if I can't be 100% personally, then I certainly couldn't be that for my clients. And mm -hmm. so um, I took off the month of December. Of you took off a month? <laughs> Well, wait until I tell you what's next. <laughs> so, so I took off the month of um, December in um, in 2020 just to kind of revamp, and then made a commitment to myself for the year that I would really say no much more often. That I would say yes to those opportunities that were really in my sweet spot. Mm. And I've been fortunate in my business, so I didn't have to chase the dollar, even though, you know, as you know, Dr. James, so many of our colleagues totally lost their businesses. Yes. Um, and so I knew that I, I needed to to say no more often. Now, I still was really busy. However, what I also realized going through this year for the things that I want to do next I had to make space for it. Mm. And I think I might've shared with you, probably offline, I don't don't think I shared it on the podcast earlier, that I had started a nonprofit um, three years ago, meaning I it was legally set up as a nonprofit, but I had no time to do that, to, to get it going. And I'm, I'm one of those folks that's proud to tell my age because the other alternative is six <laughs> feet under. I'm 71. And so what became clear to me, thank you for that response. I, I, I appreciate that. I see all hand raising and everything. My grandmother's good genes is, I always give her credit. But in any case, I realized that if I did not make the, the leap to run, to do this nonprofit work now, then it wasn't going to happen. And so what mm. kept, what well, kept coming up in my mind was if not now, when? Mm. And so uh, next year, it will go live. Now, the other thing that I realized I needed to do to help with that transition. So now I'm just putting it out to the universe that Omicron is not going to get in the way <laughs> is that my husband and I are going to leave on Ju January 15th for a world cruise. We will be gone for four months. Ooh, stop. And so... Uh, so I'll, I'll be blogging about it. I'm going to be blogging from a DE, DNI perspective. But in any case, we're going to go on a world. This will be our second one. The other one got interrupted because of COVID. But I'm going to go on a world cruise. And one of the reasons for, for doing that again, I mean, we'd like to cruise, but not usually that long. One of the reasons for doing it is it helped me 
have a conversation with my consulting clients mm. that wanted me to renew my contract when I kept saying to them that contract is ending in September or it's ending in December or whenever it was, then I would say to them, well, here's the thing. I'm not going to be here from January to the end of May. And then I'm going to take off July and August. So I'm not going to be here then. Now, July is for NSA for the most part. Right. But in any case, that enabled me to transition them either to people on my team, other people that could take the work, um, or for them to to choose someone they selected. I didn't want to just leave them hanging, but making that decision that absolutely I am, I'll still have my speaking business, but I just won't be speaking nearly as much. I'm really going to be focused on uh, a very grassroots opportunity to bring people together to learn how to speak to each other, to learn how to mm. talk without losing their temper and all of that. Um, I, I knew taking the world cruise and making the commitment to uh, transition from my consulting clients, um, I'd, be able, I'd be able to do that. The biggest learning for me really, um, I actually learned from a colleague of ours. She has a website called What Is Mine To Do? I, I'd ask, ask you to check that out if you haven't. Her name is Tracy Brown. And she had a revelation after George Floyd's uh, murder, and she's also a DEI specialist. And that just kept resonating for me. What is mine to do? Well, what is mine to do now at this part of uh, this uh, point in my life is to get back connected to community, to mm. reach people that I don't reach in my corporate, in my corporate role, um, to help in whatever ways I might be able to do, to, uh, to help. So that is mine to Lenore, do. Lenore, four that's, months that's going around the world, want to come back and still be off for two more months. Wow. <laughs> Are you hiring? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're on my list of people that I recommend my clients to as, as, as opportunities. In fact, I just this morning had a, a touch base call with my, um, my primary admin and gave her a whole list of names. Now, this is the person if they want this, this is the person if they want that. And you know, that's what's wonderful about NSA is that um, we don't ever have to say no, absolutely to a client. We can help that client sure. find the, the next person uh, that very often can be, you know, better than what I could be uh, to, de to deliver what they need. So um, I'll be, I'll be doing, and I won't be out of touch. I mean, the, okay. I'll be on email and, um, uh, my blogs will be posted on LinkedIn and Facebook. And well, all I'm that. sure when you're on deck yeah. drinking those daiquiris and laying back, you're not going to be now, thinking Jim, about Now, Jim, you know <laughs> my drink is champagne. Life my, is my, my bad. My bad. <laughs> so my I see Kimberly. Bad. I'm in there with Kimberly, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tanya, Tanya is champagne your drink. Tanya Murphy is a sales executive at Pandora. She is also... Again, one of my favorite people, sister from another Mr. Creative, insightful Tanya Murphy. Welcome to the show. Hey, happy to be here. Happy to be here. Unfortunately, champagne is not my drink. <laughs> it is not my drink. Mainly my drink lately has been water, guys. I'm coming off of a 21-day water challenge. And so wow. it's been really cool to see how much water I can intake. And I needed to do it for several different reasons. So, so that means you live in the bathroom and you're, you're, you're losing all this weight, right? <laughs> well, yes to the first part. <laughs> and what's going on with the second part? <laughs> Insights for the year, highlights, lesson learned, surely, or the path continue on? Hi, everyone. I am so inspired by you all. I will open by saying at the beginning of this year, my family and I would do a Sunday night call. And in one particular session, we all came up with a word that would lead us through 2021. And my word for the year was being obedient. And what I meant by that was being obedient to God's will. And so in preparation for today, actually, most times I have always written down what I was expecting for the new year, but I never really wrote down my accomplishments or what happened in 2021. And I actually did because if we had this conversation three weeks ago, I probably would have said something like, you know, it didn't feel like 2021 was, was its own year. It felt like it was just an extension to 2020. But yet, when I wrote down 
2021, it absolutely was a stand out, stand on its own type of year. Mm -hmm. And so my word for next year will be intentional, to be intentional. And here are some highlights. And Dr. James, you and I talked about this. Yes, I am in sales and marketing, and it is my love. I love what I do for SXM Media, Sirius XM, Pandora. That's, that's how I make my living, and I love it. After 2020, I too, I was so intrigued, as you know, about, you know, DE and I work. And so I got my certification from Cornell University. And the practical, the one practical takeaway from that course was I am responsible for my second thought and my first action. I am responsible for my second thought and my first action. We all have our own bias. We all come with our own thoughts, whether it's from the influence of parents or teachers or friends, we can choose how we want to show up. And so as I go into next year, into 2022, it's that intentionality. You know, we talked about showing up authentically. And for me, you know, that really is setting up my year. You also know I have a love for sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And so in 2021, I had a chance to do that more and I love it. And something else that I have been intentional about is instead of saying, it's just the change of words, instead of saying, I have to do, insert what it is you have to do, I get to. Mm. I get to do it. Mm. I get, and it just changes the mindset. And I'll give you an example. From the water challenge and from other things, I have structured out my day. I'm also part of a leadership academy through my work, a six-month leadership academy. And I feel like actually I should have a doctoral degree when it's over. It's a lot of work. <laughs> I had to structure my day in different ways. And I know for some of you might say, oh, wait, you're getting started at seven. I'm not an early riser. So for me, I have structured out my day where in these blocks, seven to nine is my own time for self-care, whatever that might look like, whatever that might be. And right now it is this leadership academy work that I need to get done. Then nine to noon are my big rocks. Take care of my big rocks. Mm -hmm. Noon to four, it's my follow-up hours. And then four to seven is setting up my next day, You know, getting things in line for what I did not accomplish throughout the day. Now, that's my structure throughout my day. It has helped tremendously. And then within those blocks, it, I, also, I also say, wait, how much water have you, you know, taken in throughout that day as well? Because with all these things that I want to accomplish, how can I do them simultaneously? Mm. I'm, just, I'm just hearing you go and go. And I've known you for a long time. And I'm seeing continual growth, continuous charisma, smiling, loving what you do. But you, you mentioned that. You're not a morning riser. Well, there's someone who just jumped on, president of Big Brothers Big Sister, Mr. Marcus Allen here in the Philadelphia, South Jersey area, who turned me on to something called Morning Miracle. So Mr. Allen, do you want to share some of your highlights and also speak to Tanya about this Morning Miracle thing? <laughs> Listen, I... I heard Tanya going, I was like, I'm just, I'm, I'm just muting myself. I just want to hear all the nuggets that she's bringing to the table. But hey, Jim, thank you for having me. And as you know, I am an early morning person. I, you know, I get up every morning, 4.35 a.m., um, but I get up with a purpose. Um, but before I get up, you know, one of the things that I do is I make sure when I go to bed, I map out my day for the next day. And one of the things I read in the book, The Miracle Morning, about Hal, Hal Elrod, he talks about um, how we can make every day a miracle. And Ooh. the way you do that is how you think about your next day, setting aside a, 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 a pad, as I do oftentimes with my legal pad here, <clears throat> and <laughs> writing what I want my next day to be like. And then every morning getting up and, and, and practicing this thing called savers. And savers is silence, affirmation, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing. And basically in the book, if you get, it's a really awesome book. And Hal Elrod was this amazing salesperson who lost his life. He was, he was in a car accident. He died for, I think about three or four minutes and they revived him. 
And when they revived him, he had a new outlook on life. Yeah. And one of the things that he felt that, or at least he speaks in the book to this miracle that he was able to survive. And he is um, Reverend Robertson. Uh, he does uh, talk to uh, his faith often. Uh, he also talks about this way of the way we improve ourselves is how we improve our habits. Ooh. And so every morning I start off with these six habits. One is silence where I meditate for 10 minutes where I pray first. And then I go into meditation for 10 minutes, right? Then I go into affirmations. I have my affirmations written in my journal and I read my affirmations to myself. I start off by saying, Marcus, you're an awesome CEO. You are a great father. You are a community leader who cares about people and developing people. So I go through my affirmations and then I go through my visualization, which I have a vision board. I also have pictures in my phone if I'm traveling so I can look at three pictures. And I, one of them is a picture of the beach in Miami because that's my favorite place to be on the beach. <laughs> and I think about Jim, like the wind blowing in my face, the smell of the seawater, the sound of the seagulls, right? I put mm. myself there every morning. Mm. Then I exercise, I do my exercise at the end because um, I exercise two hours a day for something that I'm preparing for that you know about. Um, that we all then, are going to know about very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> and then I do reading. I, I read for at least 10 pages of a book right now. I'm reading this book, which is an awesome book, The War for Kindness. And because of me doing savers, I've committed myself to reading at least four books a month, 48 books in 12 months. Um, so two books I'm reading at the same time, this one and Will Smith's book, which is awesome. I Listen, uh, Michael, you're a Philadelphia guy. Jim, you're a Philadelphia guy. Uh, I don't know who else is from Philadelphia, but Will Smith did. Okay, Tanya, you as well. He did an awesome job in his book. So please go out, go out and get that. Um, and then the last thing is scribing, which is something I never did in my life. Um, and I write down every day, like what my yesterday was, mm. what I'm hopeful for today to be and what I have to do today. And I end it with at least five things that I'm grateful for, right? Mm. And so I've been doing this now, I'm 143 days in straight. And I started doing it when I did my bike ride across America uh, this past summer, I rode my bike from San Francisco to um, Atlantic City. Um, in 50 days with three buddies. Um, and through that, one of the guys who was my roommate, <laughs> he said, Marcus, and I worked all through my bike ride. He said, Marcus, do you ever have a silent moment in your life? He said, you get up, you're on the phone, you're doing business, you're talking to people, man. He said, do you have silence in your life? And at the time, I never thought about the value of science, silence. And so he told me about the book, The Miracle Morning. And that's how I started this journey. And so um, now to your point, Jim, um, I am now training uh, as if that wasn't enough. I, uh, that was the hardest thing I've done in my life. Imagine getting up every day and putting your butt in a seat saddle where you already have saddle sores and you got to do another hundred <laughs> miles and you're going and over mountains. Especially when you're six foot seven, okay? And 260 pounds. And so <laughs> guys like me don't get on a bike, all right? <laughs> uh, um, so I, I did that and now I'm training for, so I, I've been doing this eight years. Every year I, I choose something that I've never done before where it challenges me both physically, spiritually, and, and, and mentally. Drum and so roll, year, please. Drum roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> so next year I'm going back to the motherland and I'm going to climb this mountain, Kilimanjaro, um, me and, and, and three of my friends. And it is something that I've never done before. It scares the hell out of me, um, which is why I definitely want to do it. And I have two other things that I won't spoil it here that I'll do to complete the 10. And I've talked to Will Smith while I was, while I was on my bike ride. And he, he does a lot of crazy stuff. And so the two of us are trying to figure out how we can do something that like really pushes, like I got to do something that pushes me. He does stuff that pushes him. So hopefully we can come together on something together. Why don't you guys um, come together and, and bring Tanya Murphy with you? <laughs> Absolutely. Come on, Tanya. <laughs> I'm there. Miracle. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Marcus with the morning miracle. He turned me on. So I did it during the month of September. And I made it. It, it wasn't, it wasn't easy, but you get used to it. And then in November, 
I took a group of students through and in January, I'm going to do my third time. It hasn't been consecutive like Marcus, but it's character building. You fall in love with silence and you get more work done before everyone wakes up. So I just wanted to plug that. And after Kilimanjaro, I'm sure Marcus is going to find something else to do. It's what, it's what you do, right? It is what I do, Jim. It is what I do. <clears throat> and for me, the purpose, um, you know, I try to make sure everything I do has a purpose. And for me, the purpose is how do I live my best life, right? Mm -hmm. Like I turn 50 next year and I probably won't see another 50 years. And so my goal mm -hmm. in life now is how do, how Elroy talks about L10, having a, a level 10, level if you 10, yep. rank things in your life from one to 10, how can I have L10 in every aspect of my life? Whether we're talking finance, we're talking career, we're talking romance, we're talking like every area of my life. How do I do that? And the only way you do that is become a better person and always constantly focus on professional and personal development. Mm, mm. Jen, I would love to get your take on what Mark has shared as well as lessons learned, highlights for you. Jennifer is the Senior Director of Market Access Hemi at Vertex Pharmaceuticals. Jen, happy Hi, holiday. thanks for having me back. Um, it's, a, it's a blessing to be around all of you too today, so thank you. Um, you know, I think so. Some of the story that I shared early in the year was around our LGBTQ journey with my uh, my oldest son um, and also his mental health journey and us as a family unit. Right. And how that impacts when we think about chronic illness. And I think for me, the lessons learned this year um, and Marcus, I, I may have to you know, pick your brain a little bit because I thought I was motivated and worked out a lot, but you just take it into a whole new level. So um when you think about taking care of yourself, to your point, Marcus, and, and really putting that mask on first, you know, here's this child who's gone through such, he's only 14 years old and has gone through severe, he has severe mental health issues and, you know, has come out as trans two years ago. And this person comes back from acute care um, in March, uh, May of this past year, of this year. And the first thing he wants to do is take care of himself better. And Craig and I um, do CrossFit and we've been big CrossFitters. And here's this child, uh, young man who's gone through all of this um, trial and he's doing four to five days a week of CrossFit now, looking at his nutrition, you know, for his mental health and his overall well being. And I think about he's motivating me now, right? Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't putting the mask on. So when you think about relativity of taking care of yourself, so I'm not climbing Mount Kilimanjaro yet. But, you know, now that you put that out there, I may have to start training <laughs> or the bike ride. I don't know, either or, you know. Well, well Jen, you um, and Marcus have a lot in common. You both were starting forwards for your universities. You are Brown University. And Marcus, remind me where you went to school? I went to the great college of Payne College in Augusta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I got two ballers here, two ballers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, seriously, I got to uh, get on that bike, though. That sounds like a good uh, a good thing to do every year. If you're um, anything like me, Jennifer, I'm sure your knees hurt. Like biking is really good for your knees. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, no, I'm not a runner. Definitely not a runner. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you think about what the lessons learned. And I think about was we've all experienced COVID, right, the past two years and really reprioritizing, you know, what's important to us. And, you know, again, I keep hanging on to what Marcus is saying, but it's, it's more about the time you're spending with others and how you're taking care of yourself in those silent moments, which I wasn't doing either, and really just enjoying where you're at at times. Um, everything is relative in the pain that we all experience. And I think we've all been experiencing COVID, you know, that pain together and that mental, imp mental health impact it's had on all of us and having to do things differently. And it's how do we still take care of ourselves and connect with others during that time. Powerful, powerful. We can go on and on and on, but time is getting away. Several other brilliant minds have just logged on. One is the Toy Sweeney, CEO and founder of the Well Dressed Brand Toy. Happy holidays! Uh, thank you for joining us. Lessons learned, highlights, any tips for us to take in to year twenty twenty two? 
Oh, that's a good one. Hello, everybody. Happy holidays. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm so excited. I was just looking back through my calendar over the year and realizing how much an impact you personally have had on, on me. <laughs> so thank you. I'm like, oh, I met that person through Dr. James. Oh, I was on Dr. I was on Dr. James again. Okay. <laughs> so uh, before I answer the question, I just want to uh, give you a heartfelt thank you for um, making such an, a huge impact impact in my life um, this year. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Ditto. And I love that sign. Be afraid of mediocrity. Yes. 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 We, we can't do it. We can't do it. You have to be afraid of it. And I think that, um, I don't know, to answer the question, I think that what keeps resonating in my mind, at least today, is that the journey, I heard Tyler Perry say this, the journey introduces you to yourself. Mm. You know, mm. and I think that Marcus is smiling. That sounds stealing like something that. Mark. Hashtag that sounds like stealing that. It sounds like something Marcus would say. Um, but you know, I was just watching an interview with him today, and and they were talking about all the things that he'd been through, and a lot of it is just like the trauma, right? And so, um, you know, as I hear a lot of people talking about the trauma of the last year and a half, one of the things that I decided to do is I got there's two things that I decided to do I decided to, to go to therapy um, so I've been in therapy the last couple of months and I also decided to get a food coach get like a plant-based health coach because it's just one of those goals that um, I just haven't been able to tackle and so like any great athlete right I need a coach so I'm like okay get me ready for that next level because I'm like Lord there's anything that I'm doing that's going to keep me from what you have for me in 2022 mm -hmm. uh, we need to just shut that all the way down and so that was my motivation. And so I think that that's what I've learned is just that journey is now leading me now that I can see everything so clearly. It All it was doing was just preparing me and leading me. Um, I'm very excited. I, I As I look back over the year, I have some great things to celebrate. Uh, you know, I think we had talked earlier in this year on the show about just I had like over seven deaths in my family this year. So, you know, there's a lot of um, just kind of grieving for my my family that has to take place, but, um, you know, I'm going to choose to just really celebrate the wins as well. Mm. So I, I got an opportunity to do a TEDx this year, which I'm very excited about. Um, I, you know, I was like, what me doing a TED talks. Okay, let's go. Um, <laughs> where I'm talking about story and how you're choosing to frame that, uh, the things that, that kind of happened to you. Um, I was featured on over 10 podcasts this year mm. and I picked up nine new clients. And so um, I feel very grateful, very, very blessed. And I just keep reminding myself that the journey is just introducing me and in who God is calling me to be in the new season that I'm walking in. I love that. I love that. Hashtag stealing it. The journey <laughs> introduces you to you. Yourself. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And speaking of introduction, I was introduced to this superstar late last year. We have partnered on projects. She's here all the way from Minneapolis, Minnesota. This is Dr. Tali Vang. She's the Health Equity and Education Director at Hannafin Healthcare, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Consultant. Lenora, you and Tali need to connect, talk. There's some magic there. Hello. Hey, what's up, Doc? Not much. Hello. It's good <laughs> to be here. It's good to see you again. What's what's the weather like in Minnesota today? Snowing. <laughs> <laughs> it's snowing a lot today. <laughs> yeah. Talk to us about your highlights for the year or any wisdom for 2022 or your journey, lessons learned. Yeah, well, I've enjoyed listening to some of those that have shared uh, when I logged in. So thank you for that. I, uh, let's see, some of the things that I would say have been wonderful this past year have been um, being able to create things for myself. Mm. You know, you spend your whole lifetime giving yourself away and oftentimes it's not for you. And so with the consulting business and with connections like working with you, Dr. James, it has really been for me and for my purpose. So that has been incredibly um, fulfilling Lessons learned, um, I think <laughs> focusing on what is in your control, letting go of things that are not in your control, 
and expanding your span of control, right? Mm. Like that mm. is something that um, I'm learning and continuing to, to move forward within this next year. Tell me about what you learned when you came to Philly this year. <laughs> oh, I learned a lot. So I took Dr. James Bootcamp, right, for, for speaking. And um, the first thing that he does is he video records <laughs> you. <laughs> don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. <laughs> I was put on the spot over and over again, but I found that I learned the best that way. I learned the best when you throw me into novel situations and I have to think on my feet and I have to just rely on myself. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I won't tell the details of all the specific lessons, but I learned a lot. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Whew, this is amazing. We have nine minutes to go. Open mic, open mic. Who wants to take it? Help land this plane with some wisdom, inspiration, some vulnerability, authenticity, however you want to land the plane. Who's up? Open mic. Open mic. Don't, don't let me call on you. All right. Okay. So <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll I'll, I'm listening to all of the diversity, equity, and inclusion stuff. And, and one of my big projects that I started, and I don't know if I've talked to you too much about this, is um, ethical artificial intelligence. Hmm. And so one of the insights that we had this year in the work we've been doing is that the bias is usually coming from the business model. We as a capitalist society have decided that it's okay to make money if that means that we're making money and moving it from point A to point B at the expense of somebody for, for whether it's race or economic or gender or whatever. And, um, and so we're, we're hoping to move forward on that research this year. So that's another one of my big projects besides the book. But um, but when you hear artificial intelligence, there, there's a massive amount of bias built into it. And we think because it's a machine doing it, even when we hear machine learning, it's so much of it is based on centuries of bias built into the data itself and and it's generally in the business model because we as a society have embraced capitalism which is not a bad thing but it's also not a perfect thing by any stretch of the imagination and so um so anyway so that's i, I i'm inspired by hearing all of you talking about this stuff to redouble our efforts and um and so i just wanted to share that <laughs> <laughs> it is always always great hearing from you again I, I mentioned to the others we went on our doctorate journey together we sat right next to each other i got smarter than from the other <laughs> professor <laughs> sitting next to tammy for a few years <laughs> i just admire your resilience and all the in the way you've embraced technology james because i know how <laughs> no how big of a journey that has been for you <laughs> What's Excel? <laughs> but we did it. TM, I see you smiling. What do you got for us before we land the plane? I was smiling because I was actually putting a comment in the chat about boot camp and how I was, you know, remembering um, Dr. Vang speaking about her experience. I was recalling my experience and the vulnerability of getting up and sharing a story and connecting with people who you don't already know and sharing a piece of yourself that maybe you're not 100% comfortable with, mm. but it certainly gets you out of a shell and opens up, you know, what the possibilities are. And isn't that exactly how life is, the correlation between what we're doing when we're in boot camp to literally how we are to show up in the world. It really is, you know, I love, I love, I have loved this time. And what it comes back to with me is, you know, Mark is what you share with us. I will sit with me for a minute, but it's the, it's, it is the big things, but it's the little daily intentional disciplines that if we get those things right, however we choose to define right for ourselves, how we show up in the world daily, minute by minute, moment by moment, it really is, that's what gets me excited. And that is what really matters for me in my life right now. Mm. 
powerful. Let me, can I add in there too? So, <clears throat> so TM, is that what he calls you? Am I allowed Tanya to call Murphy. you that? Yeah, TM, yes, <laughs> TM works. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny that you brought all that up too. See, I'm like piggybacking on everyone else because, you know, it wasn't really called boot camp when I went to it when I was doing my executive MBA program when, when Jim was my professor before he was a doctor. And, you know, I think about where I was in my life and we talk about, you know, taking a pause, but never changing who you are, right? Being your authentic self. And I think about that. And I think my journey um, personally from my career perspective is that, you know, putting myself out there, right? right? I thought I was this person that always put myself out there, but I really, we all like during our boot camp time, really put ourselves out there in uncomfortable situations, even those of us that are very expressive. And I think about that in my professional journey, um, which, you know, I was at a place for so, so long, but it was not feeling good anymore from an authentic perspective where I could be myself. And it took three other hops for me to, you know, land in a place right now where, um, you know, it's a big change for me and my family that we're going to be relocating to Boston, but that, you know, includes inclusion, the diversity, the diversity of thinking, um, and I'm working on a product that is going to be, you know, when we talk about healthcare inequities and disparities with the sickle cell population. And I, there's so much correlation between mental health, right, and chronic illnesses and where we all see that we really need to pull through in our authentic selves, right? When you said the AI learning and that things that I never even thought of before. And here I am, someone who brings that authenticity and the diversity inclusion mindset and now going into a disease state where it, there's not been a lot, right? Um, and really being able to pull through all that authenticity and really make an impact from that, men that mental health impact too for these folks who are so terribly sick. So the learn is, is that find your right place, right? And don't be afraid to take that leap so you can be your authentic self at all times. Take the leap, take the plunge. Again, 20 years ago, when I decided to become a professional speaker, um, one of my favorite quotes is, they become who you be. They become who you be. So as you be, they become. And I saw Lenore and I saw how she commanded the room and I saw how people just responded to her. And sometimes you don't have to have conversations with the person every, every day to be a mentor or to be a role model. Just be and they will become. And I, I, I just want to publicly thank you for just being as I watch you it's 20 years later. And I still watch, I still look up to. So thank you for continuing to help speakers grow into the person they can be. All right, as the plane is around the land, two minute warning, who has some two minute tools for us before we say Happy New Year? Hey, Dr. Mark, you want, you want, you want Mike, go for it. Yeah, I was just gonna say real quick, uh, I, I've been like really uh, embracing this idea of radical authenticity. And as I continue <laughs> to embrace it um, in my relationships and my conversations with those who I care about and I respect and inspire me, um, it's not lost on me. You and I have had this conversation that um, authenticity uh, helps with integrity. Um, and integrity, in my opinion, come, well, not in my opinion, it's fact, it comes from the Latin word integer, which integer for those of us who are math majors is whole numbers. And so integrity is wholeness. And I believe integrity is when who we see ourselves as matches up with who we tell everybody else we are, mm. right? And so oftentimes I think we have depression when there's a chasm or there's a big gap between who we are and who we have to live the lie for. And so this idea of radical authenticity for me is so mentally healthy, right? And, and I, I told a friend of mine this morning, I was just saying this to her this morning, and it just came to me as we were having a conversation because she deals with some depression. And I say, well, you can't just be authentic. I say, I think it, it comes with two things. You have to be authentic and you also have to have a positive mindset because you can be a nasty person to be authentic, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so so I, I just want to be clear for me this year, I really focused on giving, being vulnerable to the, one of your speakers who said being vulnerable, like that is uh, all authentic. Um, and also framing how I see the world in a, and not allowing what happens on the outside to get on the inside mm. and my positivity showing with my authenticity. Love it. Thank you.
on Friday at around 11.59 p.m. and you're thinking about next year and you're thinking about where you've been and, and where you're going, I hope you also think about the time you spent with us today. You shared a lot, you heard a lot, you met new people, you're part of the Dr. James Show family now, stay in touch, joint ventures, create new possibilities. And as I say on my voicemail, you'll always get what you've always gotten until you become the person you've never been. Let's continue to become the person we've never been. And for those of you who have stayed in here with us for the last 90 minutes, thank you. Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah. Happy holidays. Thank you so much. And don't forget, I always say it, you've just been gym packed.